Okay, so the great thing about this math problem is you don't even need to know algebra to solve it. Now, uh, clearly this is an algebraic equation. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual problem. We have 5t over 6 minus 1 third is equal to t minus 3 over 2, and we want to solve for t. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but even if you don't know algebra, I'm telling you, you could still figure this out. And obviously this is a multiple choice uh, question, so here are our uh, possible answers. So clearly select the uh, right answer. Now, if you uh, were able to figure this thing out, go ahead, or even if you're not able to figure this out, at least guess when it comes to uh, multiple choice questions for those of you that have to take um, test still, you know, something like this, never, ever, ever leave a question uh, blank. So just guess at least, but go to put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, we're going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step with algebra and without algebra. All right. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is our uh, equation. And uh, in algebra, anytime you have an equation that involves fractions with a variable, Technically, we're talking about something called rational equations. For So uh, for those of you that are still math students or you're taking algebra and you're like, ah, where did I learn this? Well, you're, uh, you're, you learned it in some sort of chapter or unit called rational equations. All right, so let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer to this equation is E7. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence because clearly you know how to solve basic rational equations or you are a very uh, uh, astute test taker. Okay, in other words, you're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even know what a rational equation is. I haven't done algebra since 1968 or whatever the case is, but I was able to get the right answer. Or maybe some of you are like, hey, I got the right answer and I don't even know algebra. Well, that is even more exciting. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, the solution right now. All right, now, as I indicated, um, we are dealing with uh, what we call uh, a rational equation. You know, it's a kind of a fancy term to describe an equation in algebra where we have fractions and variables. Now, I'm just kind of giving you a basic uh, definition of this, but it's you know not so important that you, uh, you know this, that this is a rational equation. What's uh, more important is actually how do you solve it. But when you have a multiple choice uh, uh, math question, okay, uh, more often than not, you can use the solutions to solve the problem. All right, now that is a huge hint. How could we use these solutions here to figure out which one is right? Well, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, maybe we should like plug in a value. Uh, so if t is equal to, for example, two, that would be our choice, uh, c right here. Well, maybe we could take this value, uh, two, and plug it in for this t, okay, and plug it in for this t, and then to kind of see if uh, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, because if we plug in a 2 for t here and t here, and then we do this math, now the resulting math is basic arithmetic, we're talking about fractions, well, then we can compare to see if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Remember, in, the, uh, in an equation in mathematics, this equal sign is basically stating, you know, hey, the left is the same as the right, okay? So if I have 7 over here, and I have an equal sign, well, then that implies that I have to have 7 over here in order for this to be a true statement. So if we get two different values here, well, then in fact, t, or sorry, 2 would not be the solution, okay? So we can go through a process of elimination. Now, I'm going to start with this nice easy number 2 because, you know, we have some negative values here. So let's go ahead and do this. This is one approach that you could take uh, if you don't know algebra, but if you at least understood these concepts, you don't have to directly solve this rational equation. All right, now, if you want to go ahead and participate, just pause the video and plug this in, see if you can do this. But uh, that's probably the best um, way to get the most out of this video. So we're going to plug in this uh, 
t is equal to 2, we're going to check to see if this is the solution by replacing these t's with 2. All right, so let's go and do that right now. So the result is the following. Okay, so instead of 5 times t, we have 5 times 2 over 6 minus 1 third is equal to not t minus 3 over 2, but 2 minus 3 over 2. Now this becomes a lovely number crunching operation. All right, so 5 over 2, or 5 times 2, excuse me, is 10. Okay, so this is going to be 10 over 6. That's what we have right here. Minus 1 third is equal to 2 minus 3 over 2. So let's just get, kind of um, chip away at simplifying uh, both of these fractions. So 10 over 6 minus 1 third, I can simplify that fraction uh, to 5 thirds. Or I could multiply uh, this uh, fraction over here by uh, 2, the numerator and denominator, but it's just better to uh, reduce this fraction because uh, you're going to have to reduce anyway. So we have 5 thirds minus 1 third. Now here, let's just go and finish the left-hand side. We uh, are subtracting fractions. The denominators are the same, so we're going to subtract the respective numerators. So 5 minus 1 is 4 thirds. All right, so that's our value. You can see here that this is not going to work out. Let's go over to the right-hand side. So here we have 2 minus 3 over 2, but we got to put that 2 over 1 so we can um, have a fraction as well. Now we uh, need to find the lowest common denominator here. That is 2, right? So the LCT is 2, LCD is 2, so we need to multiply the numerator and denominator here by 2. So we're going to have 4 over 2 minus 3 over 2. So when we do this lovely uh, simple math right here, 4 minus 3 is 1 over 2. So here we have 1 half, here we have 4 thirds. Is 4 thirds uh, four thirds equal to one half? Well, no, it's not. This is not equal. So therefore, uh, t is equal to uh, two is not the solution. So again, we can kind of go through this process of elimination. You know, we're like, all right, well, uh, that's not the right answer. So I can just continue to check. Now, what's the uh, uh, what's the pros and cons of this? Well, the pro is that hey. Um, if I uh, don't know algebra and I'm like, all right, you know, let's suppose someone was going to give you a million dollars and you don't know any algebra to figure this out, but you maybe you need some basic math. You know, like I'll do it, I'll do it. Uh, but you know, so you're like, all right, I'm going to check this answer. Uh, okay, but this takes work and you got to be very careful, right? All right, this is not going to work. Then you move on to this answer. Oh, that's not going to work. You keep going and keep going and keep going. Guess what? The answer is this. So if you're on a, you know, you're taking a test. This is a lot of work you would have to invest, you know, unless you're just going to randomly check. So that is, um, you know, basically the con is the time it takes to do it. The pro is if you didn't know algebra you, and you understood the concepts, at least, you could still figure this out. All right, but uh, nevertheless, if you are a math student, remember this tactic. Always use the um, uh, solutions on a multiple choice uh, test. I'm making mean, a multiple choice question where there is an equation. Always, you can always, always use the um, uh, uh, multiple choice options to figure this out. It just takes a lot of time. All right, now we're, uh, we're going to get into how to solve this directly because if you are excellent in algebra, then you could just get to the answer much uh, quicker. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. So what are we going to do here? Well, we are dealing again with a rational... Uh, equation, basically an equation that involves fractions. So a lot of people don't like fractions. They're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, when I see fractions, it makes my hair stand up. I don't blame you. So let's just get rid of the fractions. Now we can do one or two things here. We can work with fractions all throughout solving this equation, or we could just get rid of all the fractions in one step. Okay, and you need to understand this. So to get rid of fractions in an, uh, in an equation, if you can find out what the lowest common denominator is, and here we have six, we have three here, we have two here, and this t really is t over one, so we have a one right here. If we can figure out what the LCD is, hopefully most of you already know what the LCD is, we could take this LCD, the lowest common denominator of all these denominators, and then multiply by all the terms in the equation. When we do this work, it clears the fractions, and then we can kind of continue on from there. So this is the approach that you want to take when you're dealing with rational equations. Of course, there's exceptions, but this is basically the primary uh, method to solving, again, um, uh, equations that involve more than one fraction. All right, so what is the lowest common denominator here? We have 6, 3, 1, and 2. Well, if you said, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, the LCD is 6, well, you are definitely on track to figuring this out. 
All right, so we have six as the LCD. Now let's go ahead and take that and multiply it by each term here, okay, in the equation, all right, every single thing. So you need to uh, you be very careful when you do this, and you have to really understand the distributive property. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so here we're going to take 6 times 5 over 6 times t. All right, so remember this is, uh, we're talking about fractions, or 6 over 1. So here the 6s would cross cancel, and I'm left with 5t. Okay, so that's our 5t over 1, or 5t. So 5t is the answer when we multiply 6 times uh, 5 over 6t. All right, so 6 times 1 third, well, 3 goes into 6, 2. So 2 times 1 is 2, or 1 third times 6 is 2. 6 times t, well, that's 6t. And then 6 times 3 has, well, 2 goes into 6, 3. 3 times 3 is 9. All right, or 3 halves times 6 is 9. All right, so hopefully, you know, all of you are up to speed on your fractions. And if you're struggling with any aspect of this problem, I'll give you some specific suggestions on how you can improve and learn this stuff. All right, so now we have this lovely linear equations and no fractions, so we're definitely happy about that. You're like, yes, yes, I can now solve this. So we have 5t minus 2 is equal to 6t minus 9. Let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, don't you just like the way I kind of sneak that in? Well, I need to sneak this in because I need your help, okay? Now, why would I need your help? Well, I need your help to help other people. Now, hopefully I'm helping you, if, uh, particularly if you are struggling in math. Let me just kind of emphasize this main uh, message here. In my years of teaching math, math is probably the number one uh, subject that a lot of people struggle with. And a lot of people, you know, you're kind of thinking these terms. I'm bad at math. I hate math. I don't like math. Uh, you know, I've got to do anything else but math, but I have to pass my class. Listen, I'm just telling you right now, you need to stop with the negative thinking, all right? You're not bad at math. Uh, you are, you know, uh, and you don't know whether you, in fact, like it or not. Now, if you even hate math, that may not be true. I've seen this over and over again. Uh, typically, people don't like things they don't understand, okay? But once you start uh you know, understanding math and having success with it, you never know. You very well may end up liking the subject. But bottom line is this, you need to find help. So if you're struggling in math, find help. But uh, the, uh, the first place to really get help is to change your mindset. Okay, no one out there is incapable of learning mathematics. But anyways, back to this subscribe button. Listen, I need your help to grow my channel to reach as many people as I possibly can. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so thanks for giving me a little bit of time to explain, uh, you know, basically what I do or why I do what I do. So let's move on and finish this equation up. All right, now here uh, we have 5t minus 2 is equal to 6t uh, minus 9. This is what we call a linear equation in algebra because the t is to the first power. Okay, we don't have anything like t squared. That would be a quadratic equation. And typically, generally speaking, we like to get our variables to the left-hand side and our numbers on the right. So in other words, equations look like this. 2x is equal to 8 or y minus 1 is equal to 9. Again, uh, it's more common to have our variable terms on the left and our numbers on the right. But that's not necessarily, you don't, it's not like a rule. Okay, in other words, if you have 2x is equal to 8, well, that's the same thing as 8 is equal to 2x, right? So uh, don't feel bad about keeping your variable to the right if it's going to make your life easier when you're solving the equation. And in this case, it's going to be better for us to leave our variable term to the right. Okay, we're, it's actually going to save us one less step because uh, all we need to do is move this 5t over here. Okay, then we're basically done. You'll see this in a second. And then move this number over here. Uh, and uh, again, this is going to save us a step. So you always got to think these things through in terms of how to save time. All right, so 5t minus 2 is equal to 6t minus 9. So let's go ahead and subtract 5t from both sides of the equation. All right, so basically what I'm doing is I'm moving my variable term over to the right-hand side. Okay. So uh, I need to get rid of this 5t. Remember, the golden rule of algebra is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So now we have 5t plus a negative 5t is 0. Okay. So we don't need to write that. Negative 2 plus nothing is negative 2 equal to 6t minus 5t is t.
Okay, that's pretty much the solution, or 1t. And then here we have uh, negative 9 plus 0 is negative 9. All right, so we have uh, negative 2 is equal to t, or 1t minus 9. And here, all we have to do is take one last step uh, to solve this equation by adding 9 to both sides. You see, if we um, took this 6t and subtracted both sides of the equation by 6t, we would end it up with a negative t over here. And then we would have to divide by negative 1. Uh, so just a little detail, but again, you know, something to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and finish this up. So t, uh, negative 2 is equal to t minus 9. So we're going to add t, or sorry, add 9, excuse me, to both sides of the equation. So we can get our variable on the right and our number on the left. So when we do this, negative 9 plus uh, 9 is 0. Uh, negative 2 plus 9 is 7. All right, so t is equal to 7. And uh, then, of course, you could be like, all right, uh, oh, I see my answer. Outstanding. Very, very good. All right, now a little uh, extra tip on multiple choice math questions. And this is going to drive a lot of you uh, crazy. You're going to be like, hey, Mr. UT Math Man, you know, uh, why does math have to be so complicated? Well, I'm going to tell you, right, as a, as a math teacher of uh, several decades and somebody who's designed a lot of tests, here is something you got to be very careful about, right? Then I'm going to give you guys some suggestions on how you can learn this stuff. All right. Just because you solve an equation and you see your answer, and you're like, hey, look it, I see my answer. I must have done this thing correct. Well, be careful, right? Because the, uh, on a multiple choice um, exam, many of the answers are the results of common errors. In other words, uh, math teachers are sneaky because, you know, they probably graded, you know, 10 million different uh, homework uh, test quizzes. Well, you get the idea. But they know where uh, students typically make mistakes. So they're going to basically follow those mistakes and get those answers that are the result of making these common errors. And I guarantee you, you're going to see these as potential choices in your multiple choice exam. So you got to be careful, especially if you're running, if you're doing uh, your problem really fast. Like, okay, I'm just going to rush, rush, rush. Oh, I see my answer. Uh, that must be it. Oh, I feel so good because I saw my answer, therefore I must have got that right. And then you go, uh, you know, you get your test back and you're like, oh my, I have a 71%, what happened? You know, I felt so confident. Well, you gotta be very careful. So the only way to really build math confidence is the following. You need to get great math instruction, okay? You really, really have to get comprehensive, full-on math instruction. Little tutorials are not enough. And I don't, a lot of people, don't want to invest the time. They're like, I don't have time, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I got exactly five minutes to learn calculus. Uh, if you can't teach me that, well, then whatever, you know, you know listen, I'm just telling you right now, you got to put in the time and effort to get the instruction first. Take notes, get the instruction down, get the concepts down. And then you have to practice, 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 practice a wide variety of problems, uh, easy problems, uh, challenging problems, word problems, et cetera, et cetera, to master this skill. That's the only way you're really going to increase your confidence on these exams, okay, or to solve math uh, problems. All right, so again, uh, let me go ahead and um, uh, 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 give you some suggestions on rational equations. So basically, this is stuff that you learn in like first year algebra, uh, even pre-algebra at a more basic level. So check out my full main math courses, all right? I'm going to leave links to those. Uh, in the description of this video. That's my best work. So for this uh, stuff that we're talking about or this level of math, we're talking about pre-algebra or algebra one, but I'll leave links to other courses uh, as well in the description. Now, if you are not a math student, but you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was doing this way back in 1976 and uh, I was really good and I kind of like to relearn this stuff. Well, then check out my math skills rebuilder course. Here we start with basic math and then just build you up from there from uh, algebra, geometry, even some trigonometry and probability and statistics. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.